Thank you very much. I think we all know that Premier Redford, Allison's training skills and experience are due qualify for her for the role of Premier. Her deep experience in advising a national and international policy means she leans out, leads Alberta with a real understanding of what the issues are. She proved that last week in Washington. She continues to prove it throughout Canada and through, throughout the United States on stages that are important to us, but also the stages of Trochu, Didsbury, and High Level and La Crete. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the member of the Legislative Assembly for Calgary Elbow, the Premier of Alberta, the Honourable Alison Redford. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Murray, thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure to be here in Calgary celebrating yet another leaders' dinner for the Progressive Conservative Party of Alberta. And I must say it's a pleasure to be here with Murray in particular because he was a man who knows the energy industry well and so capably represented Alberta and Washington for many years. Of course, a city that I've just returned from with Diana McQueen and Cal Dallas, and I want to thank Murray so much for all of that work that got us to where we are in Washington today. So thank you, Murray. Well, Washington was a lot of fun this time. And uh, I'll tell you that it was an incredibly positive and a productive mission where it reached, apparently, as we left, 90 degrees yesterday, which is really quite an incredible thing as we went into freezing rain in Toronto last night and snow in Calgary at 9 o'clock this morning and rain in Edmonton at 11 o'clock and sunshine back in Calgary this afternoon. I'll say that I think the drastic change in the temperature between Washington and Edmonton was probably nature's way of preparing me for question period, but it's good to be home. And I'll tell you, I am so proud of our city and our province, our citizens, and everything that we stand for. Our progressive conservative values are Alberta's values. They are the values of hard work, resolute perseverance and a can-do spirit that never cedes ground to those who seek to destroy everything that we have built together. These are mainstream conservative values that have defined who we are and will define who we are into the future. And when we tell Alberta's story around the world, sometimes to very skeptical audiences, it truly brings into focus just how fortunate we are to live in the greatest province, in the greatest country on the planet. And I think that all of us in this room know that that didn't just happen by accident. Progressive conservative leadership has shaped the Alberta that we know today. And I'm proud of that leadership and I am proud to lead Alberta in 2013. And I'll tell you that lead we must, and lead we will, in the face of challenging times, both here, at home, and around the world. Tonight, I want to talk about our track record, what we've accomplished already, and also where we're going. But first, I want to extend my warmest thanks to the committee that volunteered to organize this dinner and to Kate Thrasher, who's been a champion of this activity for many, many years. The volunteers that put this dinner together are the heart and the soul of our party. And I want to just take a moment and have all of us thank the committee for the tremendous work that they did. And it's wonderful to have been, although I was standing in the back of the stage, listen to Johnny Summers with his rendition of O Canada and to Amelia for her invocation tonight. And I do want to take just a minute, although I haven't actually seen him tonight, to say hello to my husband, Glenn. Hi, wherever you are. 
There you are, Glenn. <laughs> I just want to take a minute in front of this large crowd to thank Glenn for his incredible support, his tireless support, his patient support, for being such an incredible father to our daughter, Sarah. And even though Sarah's not here, to thank Sarah for sharing her mom with the rest of the province. I just have to say that. And I know that it's a dark room, but I also want to take a minute and thank all of the families of our caucus members that are here tonight. Because without your patience and your understanding, our team wouldn't be able to do what we do. So even though it's dark, I'd love it if our caucus family members could stand up and receive our thanks from our heart. <laughs> Partners, spouses, daughters, sons, Thank you so much. Because it's the sacrifice of public servants, elected officials, and families that make so much of what we do possible. And for that, I do truly offer my profound thanks. And to each of you here tonight, each of you who have come to this dinner, I want to thank you for your unwavering support, for your leadership in our communities, in business, and in industry because your contribution to our party and to our government ensures that we will continue to be a party of renewal, of common sense solutions that are based on our mainstream conservative values that are focused squarely on building Alberta for the future. Now, having proven the pundits, the political scientists and the pollsters so marvelous, marvelously wrong a year ago, we have begun to implement the agenda of positive change that we were elected to deliver. On April 23rd last year, Albertans rejected the extreme and the ideological politics of division, whether on the left or on the extreme right. They entrusted this party, our party, to deliver on our commitment to build Alberta for the future, while telling us clearly to listen to Albertans, to their ideas, to their input, and in a way, quite frankly, that we haven't done before. And I'm proud to say that we are. And for that, I thank our caucus family and our cabinet members who are here tonight and work tirelessly every day to build strong public policy that will continue to build the future of Alberta. As progressive conservatives, we are fiercely proud of our record, and we should be. We have laid the foundation for modern Alberta to be the best place in Canada to live, to work, and to raise a family. It was the visionary decisions of past progressive conservative governments that got us to where we are today. Each of these governments was distinct because each put forward the right vision for Alberta at the right time. Now, many of us have, and I certainly have been reminded of this many times recently, as we've paid tribute to the giants who built both our province and our party. Premier Lahey came to power in a province that was just beginning to realize what it was capable of. His progressive conservative team made the decisions to seize Alberta's opportunities, and to seize them, we did. From investing in the oil sands to creating the Heritage Trust Fund, he cleared the way for Alberta to become Canada's economic engine and the bright, confident place that we love to call home. Premier Klein saw our province through difficult times, and he made the tough calls that were the right calls for a very different challenge set of, set of challenges that he faced today, yesterday than we do today. King Ralph, Citizen Ralph, was just that. He was a man who knew what needed to be done to put Alberta on a stronger footing for the future, even mindful of making Martha and Henry's lives just a little bit better each and every day. And I'm proud to represent the same constituency that he did in the legislature and to represent the great people of Calgary Elbow, and I thank them for their confidence in me. As progressive conservatives, we were incredibly fortunate to be able to call both of these exceptional leaders our own. And we honor their legacy by continuing to build Alberta, by making the tough but smart decisions that are necessary to reflect on growth, to build a modern Alberta that is truly open to the world. 
And it was against this backdrop that we offered Albertans a distinct path forward in last year's election. We were elected to manage through good and challenging times, to protect Alberta's gains and to build for the future. And our plan is clear. We will build Alberta. We will build our savings and we will build new markets for the resources that belong to every Albertan. <laughs> Building for the future means investing in the services and in the infrastructure that Albertans use every day. It's not just the 3.8 million people that we serve today who are counting on us, but the one million more Albertans that we expect to welcome over the next decade and the generations after them. In Budget 2013, health comes first and will ensure that resources are focused where they need to be the most. Under this government, an innovative new cancer centre will break ground in Calgary by 2016, taking over from the older, smaller Tom Baker Cancer Centre to continue to, to deliver world-class cancer care to all of southern Alberta. And we've protected funding for Calgary's South Health Campus, the largest hospital in Alberta history, so that it stays on track to open fully this year. My government is also continuing to invest in education so the class sizes stay small and so that parents have schools that are close to their home. We opened six new schools in Calgary this year and our budget plans over the next three years to provide funding for 50 more schools province-wide to meet the demands of an ever-growing population and growing families. My government is also tackling congestion because we know it is critical to our quality of life and to continued economic growth. Work is continuing on priority projects like the Stony Trail Nose Hill Interchange and the Calgary Ring Road. In fact, 70% of the Ring Road will be complete by this fall, with 70 kilometres of free flow traffic. Talks with the Satina continue on the southwest portion of the Ring Road, and we continue to be optimistic. Calgary has also been approved for $473 million in green trip funds, which has gone toward the purchase of at least 50 new LRT cars the West LRT line, and pre-designed for the Southeast Transitway. And we'll go on investing, because this city will keep growing. And the longer that we wait, the greater the cost on the quality of life of Calgarians. I'll tell you that unlike the opposition's building nothing approach, we simply can't afford to stop building. When they talk about debt, they're talking about the hospitals, the schools, and the roads that we desperately need today and tomorrow. And the contrast between our approach and theirs is striking. Either we want world-class education with small class sizes, or we don't. Either we want state-of-the-art health facilities as close to home as possible, or we don't. Either we want new, safer roads to get our families safely home, or we don't. Quite simply, our future success depends on the investments that we make today. And I make no apologies for investing today for a better and a stronger Alberta tomorrow. We know as progressive conservatives that we must always live within our means, that responsible fiscal management is a core value of our party and a core value of Albertans. We promise to challenge every dollar that government spends to ensure that taxpayers are getting value for their hard-earned dollars, and they should expect no less from us. Through the incredible work of our caucus and our cabinet, who in the face of the bitumen bubble have rolled up their sleeves and worked harder than any group of MLAs that I've ever known, we've delivered a budget and a long-term fiscal plan that puts us on a strong footing going forward. So I'd like again to ask you to join with me in thanking our hard-working team of PC MLAs from across Alberta that have made these tough decisions. Thank you. Our results-based budgeting plan is looking at every government program. Those that are delivering results will be kept and improved upon, and those that aren't 
will be cut. We promise to be reasonable with public sector wages, and again, we're delivering. We've led by example by cutting MLA pay by 8% last year, and it was progressive conservative MLAs who led the charge this year to further freeze MLA pay. We've frozen government managers' salaries and will reduce the number of civil servants by 10% over the next three years. And I'm incredibly proud of the leadership shown by another group of tireless public servants, Alberta's teachers. Education Minister Jeff Johnson worked with teachers to get a long-term, fair deal that values the incredibly important work that they do, while focusing limited resources on the classroom and ensuring that Alberta students continue to get the best start possible. We promised no new taxes, and surprise, surprise, we kept that promise. And you better believe we'll continue to keep that promise. We were able to do this by holding overall spending increases to zero in this year's budget. And for a quickly growing province, that wasn't an easy decision, but it was the right decision. Albertans told us that they wanted a clear plan on our finances. So we also set out clear rules for capital investments and operational spending, and we created a savings plan for Alberta. For the first time in 25 years, Alberta has a plan to save for the future, and will use it to grow the province's savings to $24 billion in the next three years. And by building our savings, we will help ensure that 30 years from now, our children have the same opportunities in Alberta that Premier Lougheed, Premier Getty, Premier Klein and Premier Stelmack helped to give us. And I can think of no better way to serve the long-term interests of Alberta. But again, the steps we take today will build our future success. We know that Alberta is an export economy, and we also know that Albertans own our plentiful natural resources. It is job one for my government to get the fairest price possible for Albertans, for their resources. And that's why we've invested so much time and energy in building new markets for our oil and gas, our agriculture and forestry products, to name only a few. Because only by opening new markets for our products can we get world prices and continue to deliver on the priorities of Albertans, from growing Alberta's savings to investing in our families and our communities. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I've just returned from my fourth trip to Washington since becoming Premier 18 months ago. We were there as a show of strength, for we have one hell of a good story to tell, and we have a track record that we should be proud of. We stand head and shoulders above any other oil-producing jurisdiction that serves the enormous U.S. market. We met with members of Congress in the Obama administration and with dozens of reporters and think tanks to let them know just how much the U.S. will gain from Keystone and how serious Alberta is about developing its energy resources responsibly. And I, yeah. and I spoke to those who had questions and those who had been skeptics. And I told the national public radio audience of 12 million Americans that Alberta is leading North America in adopting real measures to bring down emissions. House Speaker John Boehner tweeted today to his 467,000 followers my comments about Keystone, referencing the trusted relationship that's enjoyed and has been enjoyed for generations between Canada and the United States. And it was important to be in Washington this week to sell Alberta's record of success directly to those who will make the critical decisions about market access. And it was striking. Our trip co er, coincided with the confirmation hearing for the next nominated Secretary of Energy. It was fascinating to watch this process. He sat in a committee room on Capitol Hill and had a policy discussion with senators who asked him if they'd ever consider putting a price on carbon, if they'd ever consider investing in carbon capture and storage, if they'd ever consider investing in new energy technologies that would allow for the reduction of greenhouse gases and sustainable development.
Now, I was so glad that those hearings took place on Tuesday because that gave me all day Wednesday to talk to those same people who participated in those sessions and say, you know what? Alberta's already done that. For us, it's not a theoretical conversation. We've made it very clear to people in the United States that we share the same values with respect to environmental sustainability. And not only do we share those values, but we've taken steps to ensure that we can pursue those objectives. Because these steps allow us to continue to have dialogue around the world and to open markets. If we look at the fact that people want to know that not only are we interested in commercial objectives, but in environmentally sustainable objectives, it matters to be able to have those discussions. Because there certainly are those who have absolutely no interest in Alberta's oil sands. And they hold up Keystone as a proxy for every real and imagined environmental ill. And while they ask important questions, sometimes a little too up close and a little too uh, forward-looking in my face as security drags them out of the room, they don't always listen to the answer. And that's a shame. Because we can't let misinformation frame this debate. Science must frame this debate. debate. Facts must frame this debate. And that's why Cal Dallas, Diana McQueen and I went to Washington to directly engage decision makers and to stand up for Alberta's strong record. And here again, the choice is clear. Between Alberta Oil, with all of the steps that we've taken to develop our resources responsibly, or Venezuela's oil, or Iraq's oil, or Nigeria's oil. And we are at a very unique point in our history. We are making real progress on a Canadian energy strategy that allows us to build energy markets across this country. Critically, Premier Marois of Quebec and Premier Allward of New Brunswick and I are discussing an east-west pipeline, which is making good progress, that will allow us to carry Alberta's bitumen to the Atlantic. Very exciting. Very exciting. And we'll keep up these efforts on all fronts. Because if there is one thing that progressive conservatives know how to do, it's how to be Alberta's champion. And we'll stand tall in the face of misinformation. And we'll continue the fight to get the fairest price possible for our resources. And my friends around the world, we will win. Can you imagine for one moment if Alberta took the position of our opposition parties to places like Washington? Danielle Smith had to go to Washington on a U.S. taxpayer-funded bus trip to learn how Capitol Hill worked. But then she did begin to see the value in having a strong Alberta presence in the U.S. Capitol. However, she and her party still believe that the science of climate change isn't settled. They called for the elimination of clean energy funding, ignoring completely the conversations that we're having with Americans and others about the very real expectation for responsible development of Alberta's resources. Just imagine if that was the message that we were taking to Washington. Keystone would have been dead on arrival. And on the other extreme, we have the NDP. Thomas Mulcair is tremendously proud of having traveled to Washington and inflating Keystone's opponents with empty rhetoric. He's done his level best to undermine years of good work by premiers of every persuasion from across this country, along with the federal government, industry, and also trade unions. Incredibly, the NDP echo chamber in Alberta is happy to parrot these recent views, views that betray the very foundation of a strong Alberta economy that provides the needed public services that the NDP allegedly exists to defend. To set continued oil sands development up as an either-or proposition, that we can only have development without regard for the environment, as the NDP continue to do, would be laughable if it wasn't so serious. 
Our government is committed to both the sustainable development of our energy resources and to the continuous improvement of our environmental performance. And remember that even as Alberta deals with a $6 billion hit to our revenues because of the bitumen bubble in just one year, Ottawa has also taken a $4 billion hit this year. When Alberta doesn't do well, Canada doesn't do well. And as Prime Minister Harper put it last week, Alberta's energy industry drives Canada's economy. So by opposing Keystone, denying climate change, and ignoring the important work that's being done in Alberta to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, the opposition parties are fundamentally betraying Canada's long-term economic interests. And Albertans are relying on us to do better than that. And we're working very hard every day to build new markets so that we can get the highest price possible for our resources. Albertans are relying on us to offer what the Progressive Conservative has always provided, honest and accountable leadership that builds our province. Leadership means doing the right thing, even when it's not the most popular course of action. Premier Klein understood that. It means taking the long-term view and balancing today's needs with the foresight that's required to meet tomorrow's, just as Premier Lahey did. Above all else, leadership means staying true to our values and including Albertans in the conversation about Alberta's next steps. We have been resolute in what we have believed as a party for over 40 years. Unlike other opposition parties who now believe the path to government lies in sweeping some of their policies quietly under the rug and hoping that nobody will notice. We are the only party that will continue to deliver the responsible change that reflects the Alberta of today. We will build Alberta. We will build our savings and we will build new markets around the world. For a generation, we have been delivering for Albertans and we're not about to stop now. So let's keep building Alberta together. Thank you. standing ovation. Premier, I'm always happy to follow you. Thank you for defending Alberta's interests. More importantly, thank you for caring about all Albertans. I think that's critical to what we do as a party. And thank you for such a good speech, being with the people tonight, all on 180 minutes of sleep. Thank you. Dinner is served. Thank you all. <laughs>